Welcome to Salento with Lala, I'm David Mengele and today I'm going to take you on a journey. I was going to say I'm going to walk through the house, but today is not really going to be a walk. It's going to be more of an exploration and also I would like to tell you a little bit of a story of the person that was responsible for building this incredible property that we're going to explore with you today. So I hope you enjoy it. Let's go and discover it. arrived now if you travel through Italy you may have seen this scattered all over how are this connected to our story today well in this town there was a problem with water and only in 1935 at the beginning of June about 15 of these beautiful fountains were opened up and people were so happy about finally having water in the city but how does this connect to our story today yes I'm gradually gonna get you there but isn't it beautiful just to be I'm just going through the city doors in Galatina and now I'm going to connect the story with a beautiful piece of art and then to a building that this was going to be a beautiful story behind me the very well-known fountain from the sculptor we can read here Gaetano Martinez now Gaetano Martinez in 1928 presented this at the Biennale di Venezia and he won a really big prize so the mayor of the city in 1935 wanted to celebrate the arrival of water in this city remember the 15 fountains so what a better way to show the town that he had succeeded by bringing the water making a fountain now people in them days they were not really happy with the idea of having a naked lady italians the church remember here in the middle of the square so it's incredible that when this was open in april 1936 there were less people here celebrating this fountain than the 15 little fountains that were open around the town. But how does this fountain connect to our story? Here we are, we've got it here. G. Micoli, Giuseppe Micoli. He was a very well-known builder, artisan, sculptor back in the 1930s. He was responsible for making a lot of the beautiful details that can be found in buildings in Galatina, not just in Galatina, but also he was part of the project of building the aqueduct that brought the water to Galatina. So the mayor thought, well, what a better way of combining the two things, bringing Giuseppe Micoli and the very well-known sculptor and to put together the lantern without light known to the local people as the pupa the beautiful girl yes here in galatina should we go now and have a look at this beautiful palazzo that was built by giuseppe micoli we have arrived at this beautiful palazzo but i didn't tell you really the whole story how this came about I went to see a small property for an American client and while I was inspecting this property the owner saw me leaving messages or doing recordings in English so he told me oh okay we had a quick chat and the next thing he told me I have a palazzo that we would consider selling but mm, we're not really too sure well anyway the next thing 
I came to see it and boom, you know, it was one of those things that I couldn't really hold back. I wanted to share it with you. As I turn around, this is the Palazzo built by Giuseppe Miccoli. But how can we tell that this Palazzo is special? Well, walking through is gonna show that, but even on the exterior, can you see these beautiful details on the side of the building? And even little things like the metal work above the doors with the Paul airing fill with his little stick mans. Everything tells us that this was built by a very special person. The details right at the top, holding the parapet with those sculptures above the door, positioned in a beautiful road here in Galatina and only 30 seconds walk from Piazza Dante Alighieri where the beautiful fountain that we were looking and admiring earlier. So just there, just on that side of the road, we're actually entering the beautiful square of Dante Alighieri. So now I think we should go in and explore what Giuseppe Miccoli contributed to this beautiful city of Galatina. All right, I'm going in now. I'm not gonna hold you back anymore. And can you see this? This is Onyx, the stairs that, yes, the first time I came here, I was like, what is this? I've never seen anything like this. This is Onyx, the whole, the stairs are actually in Onyx with the light behind shining through. This is incredible, that tells you already something about what are we gonna find when we get to the top of the stairs. Are we gonna go left or are we gonna go right? I've decided to go right. You may feel exactly the same way I felt when I stepped in for the first time. Now, I probably did say this at the beginning, but I can't remember. I really feel that this building, it's a forgotten beauty. And the same thing that happened to me on another palette, I actually ended up purchasing. The feeling is the same. How can we create a legacy with these elements and the elements that we're gonna see as we walk through from the past to the future. Giuseppe Miccoli left us something so valuable and a lot of these elements carry that energy. So it's our responsibility to bring it forward and even better if we can do it with a building with so much beauty. I think to begin our exploration tour, I would like to introduce you to Luigi Miccoli. This was the only son or male that Giuseppe Miccoli had, and he decided to create this beautiful sculpture made in Pietra Leccese. I'm not gonna touch it. Made in Pietra Leccese when Luigi was about 10 to 12 years old. Now, obviously the family will take this away, but a lot of the elements that we're going to explore in this property are going to be part of the cell. And the reason is, based on the conversation that I had, is because for me it's important, it's paramount to create the legacy with the future. Wherever our eyes drop, we're gonna see incredible details from books to family photographs to ceramics to antique furniture, not extremely valuable in some case, but really amazing pieces. Now, if we just look at, for example, this beautiful chest of drawer, and just the detail of this, I don't know, could this be bone, maybe? This could be probably ivory. Three generations of people lived through here. Giuseppe Miccoli lived in this house. Can you imagine what it was like to sit around here before a television was even invented and reading a book and i love i love this this furniture it's original so for me really the elements and the details that bring this property together is what makes it really special star-shaped ceilings yes you can actually dominate galatina from this beautiful balcony and do you remember I was telling you about the details? Well, here we're much closer, so I can share the details of this balcony with you. Now, this was all the hands of Giuseppe Miccoli. Look at the details of this cast iron balcony. All handmade. Let's go through to the other side. We're back in the stairs. Now it's time to go left. And again, even in here, elements that are showing that time has stopped. Oh. 
still full of all personal things. I love the handles. It's fantastic. Now we are stepping into what was the bedroom of Giuseppe Miccoli because he lived here with his son Luigi. I'm speechless. Not just about the furniture, but about the atmosphere, about the dust. What you can breathe is like I can still feel the energy of Giuseppe Miccoli. Who was Giuseppe Miccoli? Well, can I introduce you to Giuseppe Miccoli? A very handsome Italian man. Probably for the American public, you're probably familiar to this type of look. Elegant. Now, if you think this guy was a builder, he was a sculptor, he was a creator. As I look down, I'm gonna show you something really, really special. I'm not sure if it's gonna stay as part of the property sale, but I'm still gonna share it with you. These are very valuable and extremely rare. Can you see her? She's in a glass container. The dress, all handmade with gold, 24 karat gold thread, and the photographs of the bottom of the family. Some of you may know exactly what that is. It's clean and I've actually put some white powder probably to disinfect this. It's ceramic, so it's really, really heavy. Do you know what this is? Well, toilets were not a big thing in them days. In fact, they had a problem with water, remember? So uh, if you woke up in the middle of the night and you needed to go to the toilet, you had something really useful, very handy. What is this? I can't believe this. Now I'm shocked. I thought that was a television. Can you see that? That is a television, isn't that right? But this is not a television. This is a conceptual piece of work. It's an installation. Can you see inside the television? No, I'm totally, totally shocked. There is a nativity in there with two frames, with a Colosseum at the back on one, and nativity in a glass ball in the back there, and something else that I can't see there. Another balcony. And again, beautiful light, just, just very special. I'm gonna go up to the roof now. Hi, Ludovica. Hi. And uh, while I'm, I was going up and uh, Mario is opening upstairs, I just wanted to show you the electrics. I think we've made a few steps in the right direction when it comes to electrics, but things did work anyway, so good. First, I wanna step in this room. Should we start by what could be potentially in this 16th century case or that one behind or that transistor radio that goes back to the turn of the century or the Peroni box or should we talk about these photographs representing the family you know a lot of people come into spaces like this and uh, they turn their face they got a little bit funny instead when I look at this I see things like this they've just been there, they've been dropped there. Look at this ceramic, this Majolica, 150. Look at this. I think that will make beautiful pieces in bringing the legacy and reconnecting the past to this extraordinary family and this building. And that's why I think a building like this can only go to somebody who's sensitive enough to extract some of the pieces and bring in them into the 21st century with that energy that he had centuries ago. Now this room here, he's got this roof terrace right in front of it. So you could create a nice roof space room with a beautiful space overlooking your room. Isn't that special? But this is only part of the roof terrace. We're gonna go up to the other side. We're gonna see the whole of the city of Galatina. And that's where I'm gonna end it for you. And maybe not, but you know, do you know why maybe not? Because I forgot that together with this property is not just all the top floor. We've got the whole of the understand, all the, we've got the whole of the downstairs floor as well, which we'll probably just scan through because there's another, oh, another lot of property again to go through. I don't want to bore you with a lot of property. I want you to feel the energy and the magic that I feel when I step into the past. What a better way of finishing this extraordinary walk. Well, it wasn't a walk, it was more of an exploration. A forgotten beauty. Just the idea of things that have been passed on from generation to another generation and now they're waiting and somebody can create the legacy. The setting, beautiful. You know, one thing that 
was taught to me in all the years in England was location, location, location. And this beautiful town of Galatina really gives you the element of location. In the background, the Basilica of San Pietro and Paolo. I hope you have enjoyed this fantastic tour, exploration, walk, whatever you want to call it. And please leave a comment. Uh, I don't know what to say apart from saying thank you for putting up with me and listening to me going on and on and on and for being part of this fantastic journey here in Salento in Puglia. Subscribe to the YouTube channel, leave a comment, put a like and stay safe wherever you are. Thank you.